growing your multi-op DJ business. For DJ company owners looking to share their expertise with one another and collaborate. Offering suggestions of how to start building your company, retaining your employees, and sharing success stories. Hey, what's up? Yeah, so what do you think? Of the intro from Mike Walter. Yeah. Yeah, guy's my idol. Well, he has like over 200 MCs or 2,000 or something working for him. He's, he's just it's insane. So the introduction, what do you think? A, a, a eulogy? Something you'd hear at a funeral? Come on. He's going to love it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know you think he's handsome. Yes, he, he has great hair. That's not something that I could relate to. No, no, I'm not going to ask him what his favorite Prince song is. Meatloaf, Paradise by the Dash. No, 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 I don't think he likes Meatloaf. I don't, not that particular song anyway. I'm sure he probably likes to eat meatloaf. I, I don't think he likes the artist meatloaf. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it. I love you, mom. I'll talk to you later. I got to go. Yep, I got to go. I got to go. Hey. I got to go. I got to talk to Mike. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. 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 Bye. Love you. Bye. Connecticut DJ Venue Setup, the Facebook group for DJs and MCs looking for video footage of venues to help better understand setup logistics. Combining video footage of the various venue locations inside and outside to take the guesswork out of setting up for events. Welcome to DJ Center Stage TV. This is a weekly show where we talk with entertainment leaders and DJs passionate about their craft. Each weekly discussion offers free nuggets of information and you can apply immediately to your profession. Our very first guest is a proud owner of Elite Entertainment, a multi-system DJ company in New Jersey. He has continued his company's growth with 20 MCs and over 1,200 annual events and sets the standard for excellence in New Jersey. His company was presented with a 2014 Weddy Award by Wedding Wire and in 2015 they became the first company in the nation to receive their 1,000th review with a perfect 5.0 average. He's always believed in training talent from within, and he spreads his message by speaking at DJ Expos and writing for many of the nationwide DJ publications. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Mike Walter. Mike, thanks so much for coming on the show. Wow, that was some introduction, Jim. Thank you very much. That was, I almost felt like I was hearing my own eulogy there. That was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I'm touched, really. Very nice. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Good. Thank you for having me on your first ever episode. Absolutely. Really Absolutely. Um, think about your very first job. Mine was a stalker in a grocery store. Okay. Tell me about that moment when you had an epiphany, that sudden realization that emceeing was your passion and career. Well, fortunately, it actually was one of my first jobs. My very first job was working at the local church, and I was the uh, sacristan. I would open up the church in the morning and, and uh, you know, prepare for mass, and then uh, I got a promotion, and I started doing, like, maintenance work and stuff like that. So that was kind of my very first job, but one of my very first jobs actually was emceeing. Um, I, I did a, a fair amount of bowling when I was growing up in Queens, New York, and uh, so I, I, I think at one point I was in like three different leagues, all in this one bowling alley. And so I got to know the people who worked there and I got to know the owner. And they were starting this concept of this rock and bowl or, or Friday, I think they were calling it Friday Night Madness, which a lot of bowling alleys do now. And they, you know, they would turn the lights down and they were putting up the disco lights. And the owner told me he had actually hired a DJ who was going to come in and bring his gear and bring his albums and everything else. But the DJ didn't want to speak. And the owner, this guy, Ray, knew me, and he knew me as kind of an outgoing personality. And he said, would you be my MC at the Rock and Bowl? And I was like, sure. And he offered me $25 for the night for four hours, plus all, all the beer and, and all the beer I could drink and hot dogs I could eat, which at 19 years old was a pretty good deal. So that was actually one of my first jobs ever was just 
emceeing at the Rock and Bowl, and I had a great time. And and uh, and I, I think I learned pretty early on. You you use the word epiphany. I had the epiphany early on that mm-hmm. you could make money, even though twenty five dollars for four hours wasn't exactly great money at the time. But you could make money and do something that you enjoy rather than what I was doing at the time, which was, you know, mopping up, uh, you know, school hallways and things like that, which was okay work, but it wasn't exactly my passion. So I I think I was kind of lucky early on to fall into that. And uh, and that's when I said, you know what, I think I can make a career out of this. Nice, nice. Um, And I know that your focus for the last few years has been improving everyone's performance and specifically getting back to basics with beat mixing. Uh, Tell me a little bit about that. You know, it came about really, Jim, uh, a couple of years ago, I was approached by a group in uh, London, in England. They do a DJ conference. And from what I understand, it's a huge conference. And they've brought Randy Bartlett over and Peter Mary and and, uh, a few others. And they talked to me about coming over, and I was very excited. I mean, I've spoken in, you know, Las Vegas and California, Atlantic City, but I was like, wow, an international booking would be pretty cool. And then they said, yeah, we're not, we're not going to bring you over. And I was like, okay, why? And they said, well, your message is really from multi-ops, and we don't have any companies over here. Everybody over in England is, is you know, there were individuals, and there's no multi-ops, so we didn't feel like your message and, and I kind of started thinking about that. And I was like, yeah, I really had carved out this niche where I wrote a book called Running Your Multi-Op. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I only had one product out for the industry, which was a training program basically for multi-ops. And, and so I thought, let me see if I can kind of change the direction here of what I can offer the, biz- the industry because I do feel I can help everybody, whether it's somebody who's running a multi-op or somebody who is really just an individual performer, I think I can help them step up their game. So a couple years ago, I put out the Keys DVD, which I know you have and you've promoted and you've told me how much you love and it's and you've actually sold a number of them for me, I'm sure. So thank you. <laughs> um, and that was really my aim to say, here's everything that I teach my own staff. And my own staff is, you know, like you said in the introduction, we're the first company to hit a thousand wedding wire reviews with a 5.0 average. There are other companies that got there before us, but most of them have a 4.9 or a 4.8. Um, so I think what I think what that proves is that I, when I train a DJ, I can train them well and I can do quantity, but I can also do quality. And I thought, well, this is a message I can get out there. So that Keys DVD, I basically took my own training program, but instead of packaging it like I did the first one where it was, here's all the things you can teach your guys, I basically went directly to the source. And I said, here's all the things you can do, whether you're a multi-op or a single op or guy just getting started or a 20-year veteran, here are things that you can do to improve your, your performance. And it, it really, it, it hit home. And I've got a lot of great feedback about the Keys DVD. It's been out for over a year. And so this year I put out the wedding with Mike Walter, which again was your idea. You actually planted that seed for me. You said, you know, it would be a great uh, product would just be raw footage. And I thought that idea had merit, but I wanted to flesh it out a little bit more. So that's why I put out the wedding with Mike Walter with not just raw footage, but kind of like a director's cut, if you will, where I'm giving the, you know, the feedback underneath. And, and again, that's been very well received. As far as the beat mixing goes, I know that was part of your original question. That's a back to basics thing for me. It has always surprised me how many DJs in our industry don't want to focus on the art and the skill of DJing, of beat mixing, and, and not just beat mixing, but any of the transitions that we do at events. And there's almost, there are some guys online who almost brag about it. Oh, I don't need to do that. And yeah. my clients don't expect that. And that's for club guys. And I'm like, no, man, that's a skill that, you know, I listen, I'm a firm believer in being a great MC and interacting with the crowd and everything else. But not being able to beat mix is something that you should not be proud of. And it's something that if you got to work and you practice and you worked on your ABCs, you could get better at it. So, so that's been my focus with the Keys DVD and also with the wedding with Mike Walter to mm-hmm. really get back to basics about beat mixing and not to the point where it takes away from you as an MC, right. but to, to the point where it's an enhancement to your show. Yeah, and it's great because it really does that too. Uh, when I picked the, the keys up, that was one of the things too. For my MC in training now, I have that one MC in training where he's ready to go in, in January. That was one of the things that we paid very close attention to, and he really gravitated towards it and, and learned quite a bit from it. 
And and even uh, the wedding with uh, Mike Walter, the the second that you mentioned, uh, for sure. Just seeing the transitions, uh, the placement of where you stand in the center of the room, and how you coordinate with the videographer and photographer, so you're not in the picture or however you do. There's just so much. So I think that director's cut uh, that you mentioned was was so it was it was the best thing that you could put out there where you could get an insight. So if someone were to shadow you in an event, as you mentioned, they can't really ask these questions. So you offer that commentary where you right. explain why you did what you did. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I've had a number of people come and shadow me at events. And, and certainly, if we can work it out in a schedule, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. But you're right. If you're shadowing me at an event, you cannot tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, Mike, I'm wondering why you just did that right there. I'm like, dude, I'm working. I'm doing a gig. I'm yeah. focused on the bride and groom. But that, so that's where the wedding with Mike Walter, it's not only you shadowing me, but it, it is the opportunity for me to offer that feedback that I couldn't when we were actually doing that. So yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. They're amazing products. So thank you for releasing both of those. Um, Mike, tell me about the, the PhDJ workshop. So this is something that I started with. Are you familiar with Joe Bunn? Yes. So Joe's a, a phenomenal DJ down in North Carolina. And, and I'll tell you, man, talk about a guy who has branded himself and branded his company. I've been down to Raleigh now a number of times. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there is nobody better known in the Raleigh market than Joe Bunn and his DJs. I mean, they just are, you walk into any banquet hall in Raleigh and say, hey, I'm thinking about having a DJ, you're gonna hear Joe Bunn's name all the time. So Joe and I have known each other for a number of years. We've met at conferences, we've met at, at you know, in Vegas and Atlantic City, different places. And he was the one that approached me a number of years ago and said, hey, what would you think about partnering and putting together a two-day conference, workshop, really, you know, the deep end of the pool, not one-on-one stuff, but, you know, make it pricey enough so that we're really only going to get people who are very serious about education, set a price point that, that only the people who are, you know, wow, these are people that really want to get together and really want to learn so that we can put the knowledge out like this, you know, because if you, the, listen, conferences are great. I go to national conferences all the time, but you have everybody there. You have everybody from the beginner to the experienced guy, so you can't really do 401, 301 level stuff because it leaves the beginner behind. But with the PhD DJ workshop, we really focus on high level, you know, intense education that's gonna help you get your DJ company better. It's not specifically for multi-ops, there have been a couple single ops who have taken it and have gotten a lot out of it, but there's also a lot of, you know, business management type stuff in it. And, um, so we did it three years ago for the first time and we got really great feedback and then every single time we've done it guys have just been guys and gals have just been man this has been so worth the money and the trip and the time and everything else to the point where this past year we did a phdj2 which was two days down in raleigh i just came back from that a couple of weeks ago just for the graduates so the some of the graduates who had gone through the program once they were basically asking Joe and I, what else do you guys have? So we put together another two-day conference. It's been great. We have another one coming up in April of uh, 2017, the first week of April. I think it's the 4th and 5th. If you're interested, go to phdjworkshop.com. All the information is there, and you can sign up. We limit it to 25 seats, So you know, and we have sold out in the past. So if you're interested and you're eager, sign up soon because you know maybe by mid-march i think certainly when we get the mobile beat because we'll be promoting it hard out there we'll probably sell out at that point yeah and, and the thing about it too when you have the feedback uh from people that have attended this and how it's helped them grow as a business i i can't imagine how gratifying that must be to, to hear yeah, you know the, the very first time we did it i was confident that the material was going to be worth it yeah but, you don't know until you do it you don't really know and then that very first time everybody was just man this was awesome and it was funny because i talk a little bit about getting testimonials in the workshop but that last day of the first time joe and i weren't set up to get testimonials and we were like this is crazy we actually talked about it so joe ran to his office and got a camera we set the camera up and we got a bunch of the graduates now since then we've been a lot more organized and that last day we say hey everybody wants to give a testimonial but yeah it's important to me because you know i've never wanted to put anything out there that's not a good value no matter what i charge for anything i had somebody recently saying hey what do you mean 99 for this keys dvd 99 for a dvd 
And I said, look, everybody who's bought it thinks it's a good value. So I know that it's worth it because I don't get, you know, 50% of the people saying, hey, I want my money back. Everyone who's bought it said they learned from it. So if I put something out there, no matter what the price point is, it's going to be good value. And, and you're right. After that first time where people, where the feedback was just like well worth it, then we were very confident, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and we all want to grow as professionals and improve our craft. And, and, and what a way to do it. Um, Mike, share any information about um, some additional appearances that you have coming up next year uh, that DJs and MCs can take. You know what, Jim, before I do that, let me yeah. just, I want to comment on something that you just said. We yeah. all want to grow. I don't think that's the case. I think there are plenty of people in every industry, not just the DJ industry. This isn't a knock on DJs, but I think there, there are plenty of people who don't think they need to grow. I think there are certain people who have gotten to this level in life and go, okay, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? The national conferences are, are a perfect example of that. I mean, the, you know, Atlantic City takes place every August. DJ Times puts on this amazing conference, three days in Atlantic City. And there's probably 100,000 DJs within a two-hour drive, two-and-a-half-hour drive of Atlantic City. Okay. And they get three to 4,000 DJs. So, you know what I mean, that, that I, I do, I see what you're saying, and I know you're being altruistic and you're being optimistic, but it's not the case. There are, there are, there's a small percentage of people, even, I mean, even John Young, he puts out this amazing publication, Dish Jockey News. Yeah. I think it's $25 a year for a subscription. You would think he would have, you know, half a million subscribers. Anyone who's ever DJed in their life and has a mild interest, even if you do one gig a year, mm -hmm. you would think, well, here's a great publication. I'm going to get it. But he doesn't. So I, I think it's great to say everybody wants to learn, but it's not the case. I think some people do, and then some people really want to learn. But I think there are some people that just that they have no interest in improving their skills. And I think a lot of it has to do with their their ego is to the point where they're like, no, nah, I know everything. You know, I, I got this down. So anyway, you were asking me about my other appearances. Thank you. Um, in January, I'm going to be up in uh, Lake George. It's January 16th, I believe. I know it's a Monday. It's um, it's uh, Martin Luther King Day, which is great. Mark Van Eisen puts this thing on every year. Uh, it's a fantastic one-day education. This year is actually expanding, and it's not just DJs, but wedding professionals. Uh, and that is that's going to be a great um, uh, a great day. I'm speaking. Uh, Mike uh, Alvarez is speaking. Big Daddy. Everyone everyone knows Sean Big Daddy. So that's a he's put together a full day uh, lineup. Uh, and that's great. If anyone's interested, you can go to my Facebook page. I've posted it a couple times there so you can see the link. Um, Mobile Beat in March, which I'm excited to be speaking at again for the first time in a couple years. Uh, I'm offering a, com uh, a seminar out there about improving your DJ skills. And then and Arm DJs, I don't know if you've seen what Robbie is putting together in June, but he has so many great speakers coming in to what is it, Greenville, I think, Tennessee? That's going to be a fantastic couple of days, Arm DJ. So, yeah, I'm excited, man. My 2017 calendar is kind of lined up, you know. It's nice. Uh, can you tell me about a challenge you faced when you first started as a professional in the entertainment business and, and how you overcame that particular obstacle? Well, I, I, God, there's so many I could probably throw at you. But I think one of the big things when, when I started, when I left Star DJs, because my first four years in the business, I was working for a company. Uh, and that was invaluable experience because I learned a lot. It was a big company at the time. And so I learned a lot about growing a multi-op and training DJs and everything else. Yeah. Um, so when I left them and I partnered up with a guy and we, we were growing elite entertainment, to me, one of the biggest challenges was finding talent, was, was finding people that – could, would care as much as, as the owners and would be, you know, as good entertainers. And, and the thing that I learned very early on is to, to find people who have the skills but don't have the DJing experience and then train them in, in our style, in our way. And that's, that's one of the big things that, that I really implemented at Elite Entertainment early on back when I had a partner that I was going to run the training program, that I was going to find young people who had no experience in the business and I was going to teach them everything that I knew about how to be successful. And that really worked. And, and you know, I have banquet people who have told me they know when there's an elite, entertain, elite entertainer in the room mm -hmm. just by the sound, just by what they hear and the way the party is going and the fact that the party's going earlier in the night than, than most of the DJs. They go, Mike, I always know when one of your DJs is here. And, and that shows to me that I've done a good job of having consistency in the company and really kind of building a brand that everybody recognizes. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I, I do think that when you're at a venue and, and you're performing, uh, you can. There is a, a distinction uh, between quality entertainment and, and, and just a, a DJ company that comes in to a venue. There, there is a distinction. You can easily tell. I mean, think about these banquet managers. They, they must, you know, they see everybody. They see, you know, three, four weddings a weekend. So they see everything from the best band in the world to the worst band and to the best DJ in the world to the worst DJ. And that's why it's always an honor when a banquet manager says to you, hey, we want to refer your company. It's you have to consider that to be one of the greatest honors because they could pick anybody and they see everybody. And it means that you're, you've stood out for them. So it's a, to me, it's a big deal. Yeah. Um, can you share a story about a situation at an event that you didn't have control over? Like, how were you able to turn it around if there was a situation like that and, and help make the, the event better in some way? Uh, you know, I just had one recently. I had a wedding where um, I would say about half of the crowd was drunk beyond like just party drunk, like just out of control drunk. Yep. And, and I think the best thing I was able to do was just keep the focus on the dance floor, keep people moving around, try to keep them away from the bars, because at, at one point it just can't, it got to the point where everybody was lined up doing shots. And, and I just did my best to create an atmosphere on the dance floor that would be, you know, inviting and get people out there and hopefully kind of take their attention away from the bar. Because it was getting, I mean, listen, every party, you know, you have your group that's that's really partying hard. But this was, it was one of those few times, we all know it if we DJed long enough, where it was starting to get really out of control. And um, I, I think I just did my best to really just move the focus from, all right, you've all had enough to drink, now let's dance it off, if you will. <laughs> and, and I was kind of proud that it did, that night didn't end with a fight. It didn't end with, you know, people being carted away in the ambulance. And I, I think I had some influence over that, you know. Yeah. Um, well, Mike, thanks so much for all you do in the industry. So many appreciate it. Uh, what is the best way people can get in touch with you to get a hold of you? Uh, just regarding any of the things that you're offering DJs, MCs, and business owners. Well, thank you, Jim. I, you can email me directly. Mike at EliteEntertainment.com is a great way. You can check out my website, which is DJMikeWalter.com. I've got all my products on there. Also, another way to contact me. Uh, and connect with me on Facebook. I'm, you know me on Facebook, Jim. I'm constantly posting. And yeah. I'm, in, I'm in the middle of this uh, Today in Music post, which I, I put a post up every morning about something that happened historically and interesting about Today in Music. So a lot of people are following me, you know, specifically to see that. I had a great experience a couple weeks ago. I was in Las Vegas for the wedding NBA. And so I woke up at like eight o'clock out in Vegas, which isn't even sleeping in out in Las Vegas. But that meant it was 11 o'clock back home. And I signed on Facebook and I had two messages from people saying, where's my music post? You know? <laughs> so, and it was kind of a, it was a compliment to me that people are actually looking for it every morning. So if you connect with me on Facebook, that, I'm about halfway through that series. I'm going to do that for an entire year. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different ways. I hope, I, I love connecting with people in this industry. So if we're not connected on Facebook, uh, please reach out to me and, and friend me. And I really appreciate it too. Uh, you've been so great to me and, and just providing any help anytime I have questions about things uh, and a number of variety of different things about the DJ industry. You're very responsive and always willing to help. So personally, thank Thanks. you so much for that. Jim has a phenomenal Facebook uh, group. Uh, showcasing your talents as the master. It is a phenomenal group. Yeah. It's uh, it's a very positive group. There's not no, there's no drama. It's all about people posting, you know, some maybe some clips of themselves or, or talking about performance type thing. And, and I love it. It's one of my favorite pages on Facebook. So uh, if you're listening to this and you want to connect with Mike Walter, also make sure you connect with Jim Collins and connect with that uh, that page. It's great. Showcasing your talents as a master of ceremonies, the Facebook group for any level MC looking to improve their skills as a professional, combining video footage from your events with critiques and support from others, a place to learn and grow. Though the clip that you put on there, it was, it was just uh, definitely 20, 25 minutes long, and then yeah. you came back and you did more segments just showing some more content of, of uh, one wedding that you did and and that was just great you know right. and it, I think that was that was the footage that triggered the idea of getting yep. in touch with you 
Yeah, that was the beginning of the wedding with Mike Walter. Yes. Because I put up a bunch. I just set up a GoPro yeah. on my system and shot it. And then you were like, you know, this would be a good product. And I kind of got the ball rolling on that. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was one of those good synergistic kind of moments, you know. Awesome. Thanks again, Mike. Uh, that's all the time we have tonight, folks. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for having me. You bet.